you for coming. Mm, you're welcome. I really appreciate it. Anytime. Um, yeah, this is my mother. They can tell that. Okay. Yeah, we look alike. Yes, we do. Okay. So, I'm going to ask the first question. Oh, you're going to ask me a question? Yes. Right. Okay. okay. What made you think of doing this? Doing this, the show? Yes. Um. You know, I've, the past couple of years have been a little rough. Mm -hmm. you know? Um. And largely due to my like interpersonal, you know, my relationships with uh, people, friendships, romantic ones. Us including, ones. yes. Yeah, just everything, the whole not everything. Everything was challenged like over the past three, uh, three or four years. And I realized I was taking a lot of my close friendships for granted. And I wasn't really, you know, um, exploring that. And especially this year, I learned what it means to, to what friendship actually means. And that's based on me just reflecting on the friendships that I did have that I, that, that I took for granted. And well, experiencing situations where, you know, people weren't my friends kind of showed me what friendship really was, yeah. right. And that gave me this idea, like, you know, I really wanna, you know, do something that focuses on my friendship, the friendships that I have with people. Okay. Or just the, you know, and, and spe specifically the conversations that I have with my friends or people that I'm familiar with, they really are really fulfilling and I want to take advantage of that yeah. and just show people how, you know, you know we interact. I like how our relationship, I think, has gotten a little bit better because you're more comfortable with me. Yeah, and, and specifically saying how I feel too. Yeah. Yeah. I think you were kind of scared and standoffish, and but that's okay. Yeah, I definitely was a lot more timid over the past, like most of my life. Over the past couple of years, I've definitely grown like okay. more confident, and yeah, and I, I feel better. I trust myself more, so I feel better saying how I feel now. Well, you're a beautiful especially. person, so you know, you're okay, my child. What else can I say? Right, that's why you're saying that. <laughs> no, okay. but but you have. You know, we've talked about it, but this is your show, so, yes. Okay. Whew, okay. Are you okay? You Ask away. You yeah. nervous? Can't you, want can't you, you tell? Want... No, yeah. I'm good. Well, I'd ask you if you wanted a shot. I'm okay. 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 You sure you don't want a shot? I'm good, baby. Come on, let's, let's, want... let's do this while my one brain cell is working. Okay. So, um, you know, I started interviewing you like a, a while ago, yeah. right, for, for our family history. And I did get a lot of information, but this is kind of going to be like that a little bit. Okay. And I also want to explore our relationship and what that has been. Okay. Like, or what it hasn't been like, I guess. Yeah, because we've had some, I some, know. some moments and some situations. I don't know if you want to talk about that, but. No, we can, I mean, I have, I have, I have nothing to hide. And this is a form of. It's helping us both. That's really what, that's again, you know? what I want to do this for is, is you know, therapeutic. It's almost cathartic. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Yes. See, I do know some of these big words. Okay. <laughs> so, um, do you remember, like, it wasn't that long ago, but like when you were my age, like the mindset state you were in. So I'm 29 now. Well, cause by the time I was 29, I had, I had all my kids. I had four kids. By you had four kids there. at 20. I couldn't imagine having four kids right now. Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's a different day and age. Would I have four kids now? Maybe not. <laughs> That's what I hear a lot of people say. But is yeah, it was different back then. It, 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 it's, 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 it's totally different. And um, I remember a doctor telling me that I wouldn't be able to have kids. For real? Yes. Why? They said that my tubes were messed up and that my, my cycle was crazy. And I was like, okay. Yeah. Yep. So, you know, I had Machado, then I had Brandon, then I had you. Is that why we were Ava. all basically surprises? Because <laughs> you went. Basically. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. Okay. And um, they, they would joke at the uh, doctor's office, be careful, don't talk about her being pregnant because I'd end up pregnant. Right. So the four, so, you know. So Machado's the first one. You had her when you were how old? 20, 
20. You're 20, 21, something like that. That's wild. But yeah. But um it it's like I said, it's 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 different now. And even though sometimes I do say that I would change some things, I don't know. Yeah. You know, so, but, um, you know, we'll, we just make it work. Yeah. So, well, how old were you when you moved to the States? You moved from Jamaica to the States? Oh, Jesus, 16. You're 16? Fif oh, that's no, right. You 15, 16. Okay, so you were living in New York first, right? No, I went to St. Louis. You went to St. Louis? Yes. And that, if I would say that was a mistake, that was the biggest mistake. What, why was it a mistake? It destroyed me. And I still have nightmares to this day because of what happened there. What happened? Do you want to talk about it? I was just mistreated and used, made fun of, just, 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 just stuff. I felt very, very, very uncomfortable. Um, I was in college, mm -hmm. and because the people that I was staying with, the oldest daughter was still in high school, and she couldn't understand why I was in college. And I was like, okay, Jamaica's a different system. Yeah. So we start earlier, so of course we finish earlier. Okay. Um, I would sometimes go for three to four days without eating. Who were you staying with? I don't wanna. Okay. Where was, where was grandma? She was in New York. Okay. Um, Why did she you have was to go to St. Louis? because she thought it would be better, and you know, at first I thought it would be better too. You know, isn't that so? Isn't that isn't that what you um what happened with us? You, we, you yeah, it would but be that, that that's to go live somewhere yeah, else? but see, I knew that your grandmother would not let certain things happen, and would not do well. That's just my. No, no, I yeah, my bad. So, yeah, at that at that um, time, you, yeah, yeah, I thought that was the best it was thing. The yeah. best thing, yeah, and it was Grandma Sonia, you know. And then, you know, yeah, like I, I said, the 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 relationship. I wanted to get you out of certain things, and I wanted you to embrace your culture and appreciate. So there was a lot of stuff. Um, because like I said, I still have nightmares. You know, I was. I was assaulted. Um, I'm sorry, Ma, I didn't know he was gonna dig up all that. No, but I have to face it. So this, you, you will know why I am, how I am. Uh, it's, it's just stuff like for school. I don't see nothing, so. mm -mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Like, I was going to college, Forest Park University. I was excited. I was, it was so far back that I think I paid like $330 for my first semester. So that's telling you back in the days when Moses was alive. $330 Shh. for yes. your semester? Yes, shut up, shut up. Okay, hush. Is it the 30s? So I, I, uh, anyhow. It was five cents for a Coke. <sighs> It was really five cents for a Coke, wasn't it? <laughs> right between the lines, okay? <laughs> what? So, you know, and I was excited. But okay. I guess because where I was, they didn't have a lot of people from different countries. So they would make fun of my accent. So I yeah. forced myself yeah. not to talk with my accent. Um, yep. Unbeknownst to me, my mother was sending them money, but I wouldn't get it. So I would go to college. I'm in college having two, three dollars a day. And even that in college was ridiculous. Yeah. So I took a job babysitting. Mm -hmm. And the lady that I babysat, she really saved me. She helped me out. But I would save my money. But um, one of the girls that was staying there, she would steal it. 
That was staying at the where at you were living. Where I was living, yeah. Okay. She would take it. She'd also take my underwear and wear it and put it back in the door. That's disgusting. Yeah. So, and, um, you know, just, just, just make fun and stuff. And that's where I learned how to. Did you, what did you, I'm sorry. Did try you to throw, Did you throw that yes, away? Yes, I okay. that away. <laughs> Yeah. I'm sorry. So, I know this isn't I funny, mean, but I'm no. I, but but you know what? I'm talking about it now because I haven't. I haven't. I didn't talk about it for about t almost 20 years. Yeah, I know. Well, like you don't really you you referenced it, but you never really went in detail about yeah, what exactly and your I'm still not, was there. It 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 just it just left uh, a very bad taste, and I think it has made me not trust anybody not not get into a a, a, a real relationship because like I said I still have nightmares so speaking of relationships so where was that when because you guys knew each other from oh Lord yes from forever since right? forever when we were in high school right. um he was he was back home in Jamaica okay. And then he tried to come up. Um, I only lasted a semester because I perfectly, I practically just just stopped going to classes. I went from straight A's to F's. My counselor was like, "What's going on?" I said, "I'm just not happy." And I think I told her what was going on, and she even offered for me to come and stay with her. And I said, "No," because I didn't know what was going on. I'm here in this country. Don't you know, really? And the person that I was living with, so-called family, was, I was just a meal ticket. Have you, have you started therapy for any of this? I was in therapy for a while. Um, and I just started back. Recently? Yeah. So. And, um. You know, like I said, I I used to blame myself for a lot of stuff, and um, that's why sometimes, you know, I even though I'm, I didn't know I was doing this, I would react a certain way, you know, when certain things were done or anything. It was a defense mechanism, and I didn't even know that I was doing that. Yeah, so, you know, um, my child was there in the background, but... The, um, what happened, what was that? That was Christmas? When, um, when we had that, like, heart-to-heart? -heart. When I had that mini meltdown? Yeah, that was Christmas, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right, a lot, a lot came up. Mm -hmm. And we were like, this is obviously coming from somewhere else. It wasn't rooted in anything that was presently happening no. in front of you. No. And that's when we both were like, yeah something is 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 not okay um i might tear up a little bit no because see a mother's job is to protect her children a true mother that's my version to protect do you feel like your experience in st louis and then your continued experience throughout the rest of your life has interfered with your ability to form a relationship with me and machado Yes, awesome. I think. I think sometimes I I, I just I, I worry a lot, and I think to the point that I was overprotective to the point where I was smothering you, and I wanted you guys to be a certain way instead of you forming your own personality and being yourself. I wanted to protect you. How did, can you give us an example, it's pr particularly with Machado? Well, I would do the first day she started like daycare. She, she definitely got the most of it because she's the first, the first yeah. child, especially the first daughter. The, I feel like the, the first day she started preschool, I sat outside all day. She didn't even know it, and I wanted just to go in there and just grab her and protect her and make sure she was okay. Do you, do you feel like that protection that you had for her from when she was in preschool, do you feel like it 
transformed into something else? Yeah, I think I smothered her. And I, I was so afraid of something happening to her that I didn't want her to be like me. Uh. Because I was nothing. Still am. And I wanted to protect you guys. I didn't want you guys to get hurt. Do you feel like some of the ways that you were? See, I didn't realize that then. I realize it now. Yeah. So, see, because that's how I'm able to sit down and talk to you guys and have a conversation. Yeah, I, I, did, I did not think. I did not think she was going to do this, this talk. I didn't think you were going to be no, I have to do to, it. Because I was surprised. I had a, I did I did a couple episodes before this and I filmed with I had my friend um Kavi in here and you know we were talking about our relationship with our parents and I was like I don't think I could ask my mom certain questions. Oh, no. And then she was like have you tried? And I was like I don't feel like I can. And then I I just started asking you. I started saying certain things and then I started to see that you were different than what I thought than what you were five years ago, 10 yeah. years ago. You definitely have changed. I can't approach you a lot more now. So it's definitely a lot different. I didn't think you were gonna come do, I was really surprised that you were open to this. I, I had to put my fears aside of being judged. That's hard. Yeah, and I'm I was still like- I'm trying to shake that. Well, you know what? You gonna have to, because if not, it's gonna eat you alive and make you bitter. So it's, it's like, and even now, like with Machado, I just, I just want to hug her and tell her it's going to be okay, that I'm proud of her, and that I love her unconditionally. And I'm sorry our relationship wasn't the best, but I would give my life for her. I really would. Come give her a hug, Machado. She, she is such a beautiful mother. Yes, yeah, she is. A beautiful person. And I don't tell her often enough. And I'm proud of you too. I really am. It may not seem like that, but I am. Because you guys have to go through so much. You being people, and you being empaths, and you absorb stuff. You, you, you. And, I hate that word, see, empath, man. And see, a lot of people don't understand that. So, it's like I'm a like a mama lion. Mess with me, but don't mess with my children, cause I go to jail. I promise you. And like I said, you and I have talked, and I love the fact that you've opened up to me, and we talk about everything. You don't hold it back. Yeah. And at first, I was gonna be like, "Oh Lord, this is gonna be." Weird. I know. I did. I did like, one time. We had a talk. I told you probably too much. No, you did, not but that's okay. It's all right. I didn't. I sat down there and listened to you, and this one over here. Why don't sit? <laughs> okay. All right, so um, <sighs> I wanted to dive deeper into, you said you didn't really realize what was happening, like how your trauma was presently manifesting in the moment and how like, what was that realization like? Like when you finally realized something's not okay with me and I need to go to therapy. I was like, wow. I said, because I didn't like what I saw because I was just, I was getting upset for no reason. Yeah, you did that a lot. And I'm like, why, why, why? And like I said, it, it, it's kind of hard when you don't have a support system because I was ashamed to talk to you guys and I really didn't have anybody else that, that I felt defended me and understood where I was coming from. So. I would like to dissect that a little bit. Okay. Because I, I just want to ask you a question. Do you think that your experiences 
caused you to perceive that you didn't have support versus you even though you did you might have actually had the support you just didn't feel like you could because of your ask for support because of your experience I think it's a it's 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 a little bit of of, of both because when I approached certain people and I told them what was going on it's like they didn't believe me right. and they still supported that person even mm -hmm. though they literally destroyed me broke me down to nothing to the point where I tried to commit suicide twice I was there for one of them. No. Oh, that was that was the third time. Oh, what what I what I saw was yeah. the third time. Okay. Um. So see, all of that I was just trying to keep from you guys because I didn't want you to see that dark side. And I guess in that way, I was pushing you guys away or just not. Yeah, but the thing is, we saw it anyway. Yeah. We saw it anyway. And, you know, that's why when we'd be like, Ma, just, like, talk to us. Like, what's going on? And you'd just be like, nothing. Well, no, because when I used to talk, nobody believed me. And nobody supported me. Um, the one person that I thought would have didn't. And that's Grandma. Yes. And in my opinion, if you are a mother, you defend your children. If, if, some, if you came and told me that somebody did you harm, I'm not going to intentionally go out and conversate with that person. I'm going to let that, if I have a conversation with that person, I'm going to be like, look, I know I don't appreciate what you did. I'm going to be respectful, but I'm not going to deal with you unless I have to. And you feel like grandma would deal with them and also invite them in? Anybody who hurts me is her best friend. Yeah, I remember that quote from the last time. Yes. I remember you specifically saying that. Mm -hmm. So what I do want to step away from, though, is like kind of fall, finding fault in, in anybody else and in, or even yes. in yourself, yes. but, but more so kind of exploring you kind of transitioning out of that that haze or that fog that that trauma has kept you in for for these years um and reflecting back on what that fog was like from outside of the fog right so what exactly how exactly do you feel like that trauma altered your perception of reality I think it kind of warped it to a certain extent to the point where I'm, I'm super cautious. And I, and I think sometimes, I'm, like I said, I'm overprotective. And then I try to hide it, so I become, it makes me seem like I'm cold and distant, like I don't care. How does that work? I don't I don't know how it worked. But I'm 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 being able to break down. It it took it took took a while cuz I was defensive when I first started therapy and I think that's why I stopped the first time cuz I didn't like what I heard. <laughs> That'd be it. Yeah. So, so I was like, like you know what, bump this. You 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 don't know what you're talking about. You full of yeah. Sugar, honey, iced tea. I ain't dealing with your deuces. Yeah. You know. Yeah, for sure. But the second lady, she she talked to me like we were just having a conversation yeah. where she wasn't condescending. And, you know, I would tell her how I felt. And she said, well, write down what you do. And, you know, I started doing that. And then she said, you have to step out of the box and not live in fear that you have to live your truth. Because if you don't live your truth, you are going to be a prisoner for the rest of your life. And you're going to miss out on living your best life. How long ago did you start therapy? I started this first one, it's been probably about four weeks. Okay, so very recent. Yeah. yeah. 
you like it? And you I like it so to. far? Are you gonna keep her? Or them? yeah, because like I said, she's she 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 don't pull hold no punches. She's like, okay, Those whatever. Are the best ones. I had a, like yeah. I, like the therapist that did my past life regression. She was kicking my butt. She was kicking my ass, bro. Mm-hmm. Like she was saying like. And it was stuff I didn't even want to take. She told me, she was straight up telling me that I had a savior complex. And I was like, no. I was like, no. I don't know. No, no, I don't. And she was like, okay. And then a couple days later, I'm like, yeah, I think I have a savior complex. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, but she was she was going in on me. She was like, she she was, um, anyway, that's a different story. Yeah, she said that, you know, I had to put my big girl panties on. And not dwell in the past and try to get over it yeah and that'd be the thing though and that's what i feel like that at this point and that's really what i want to get to is like i feel like at this point i know that all of that has happened and it's very traumatic but like at this point and you've already made the first all of those steps you know you're going to therapy and stuff like that but do you think you can forgive grandma for her I wouldn't say apathy, but like more so like her, her being her her trauma and her own internal issues causing her to neglect your pain. To be honest, I don't know. I I have tried, and whenever I try, something else happens to like to slap me in the face. It'd be like that, right? Yeah. So you know, and I mean. Yeah. It used to be to the point where I just scream and we'd have an argument, fuss and fight and shout. Now, I just walk away and I try not to say anything. Or, you know, I go outside or I do, it's not as bad as it used to be. Do you think maybe like the fact that you haven't healed from those things though, maybe it might be into, might, maybe, maybe it, it, it the fact that you haven't healed from those past things probably interferes or makes that slap so hard. You know, that, that new thing that she does slap so hard and, and you're not able to brush it off. It's like piling on and on because you're still carrying that baggage. Well, I'm, I'm like I said, during therapy, I am Cause she's just trying to, you know? to, to, to release it. And sometimes I have to realize it's it's not it's not anybody's fault per se, it's just the circumstances. Right, yeah. You know, if I had the people that I have in my life now, if I had them back then, it would be a whole different situation, I think. Um, and I had to learn that not everybody in your life means you good. And some people are in here for a season. You know, so I have I have cut because I always wanted to be, you know, friends with everybody and oh I no, nah, not anymore. You know, that, that's kinda so that's kinda like the generational thing that we all like kinda deal with. So I think grandma dealt dealt with that and you dealt with that. And me and Machado we also dealt with that. And that's kind of like our that people pleasing thing that uh yeah and that's probably why she um chose you know to please people that were not in her proximity versus somebody that she knew would the likelihood of them forgiving her were great was was greater like you would probably forgive her more than whoever it else, whoever else it was that you know, so she she was she was less likely to want to disappoint them versus you. It's easier to disappoint you because she knew that you would, you're her daughter. Yeah, and, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, um. And like I said, I've just I've just learned. Sometimes instead of just just reacting, I mean Christmas Day, I just felt I just felt overwhelmed yeah i mean yeah, literally so, yeah let's let's talk about what happened Christmas literally Day over- well i i'm being bullied and harassed at work Why you- on top of other stuff me dealing with your father y'all been divorced for how long and still dealing with each other we have children we will always be connected i guess and 
in the it, I wouldn't know. I'm in the kidding. last, <laughs> in the last, in the last month, I've actually forgiven him for a lot of stuff. And I asked him to come here. He said no. Nah. No, cause he no, cause he ain't going. Mm -mm, no. Mm -mm. But it's okay. Eventually he will give him a chance. So he well, will. so what you you were fine. You were fine. And then the next minute, everything was being thrown everywhere. There's, things were being slammed, curse words, everything. What what happened? Because it literally happened and like it was literally a split second. And I, I I I Do you remember I, what happened? I, I don't I really don't I just knew that I just felt so overwhelmed. I felt unappreciated. I felt, I, I, I just felt like, it was like my mind was just turning into mush. And I, I just, and so you don't your, know what happened. Your, your grandmother said something to me that set off and I really don't even remember what she said. And that. That's that fog, man. That at that haze. moment, it just culminated, and I just, I was like, uh-uh. No, because I have to, and then another thing that I'm learning is that not to take to heart what people say a lot of the times. Ooh, so she said something? Yeah. What did she say? I don't remember. I, I really, really don't remember. All I know is that it's something that just pissed me off. And it could have been something so simple. Right, that's what I was talking about. Like, it, it, it probably, you know, was just something that, you know, Grandma be saying stuff sometimes. And it was just one of those things. And then because of all of this other stuff that's walking around, all these ghosts that, like, walk with you and these voices yeah, that haunt you of the past. It, 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 it was like, after St. Louis, and you know all of that. I was like, I felt that nothing I did was good enough for her. No matter how many degrees I had, no matter how many certificates what do you mean? What I had. Do you mean good enough for her, though. What do you mean? Good enough for what? For her to what? For her to accept me and love me like a mother does, because I she doesn't love me. She doesn't. But that's for another conversation. But it's just. Every time I got a degree or certificate, she was like, oh, okay. Never like, oh, you did a good job. Or, you know, she would say something you like, is this Uncle the- Andre. Huh? You mentioned Uncle Andre when you were- Oh yeah, that's the golden child. He can do nothing right, wrong. So that's related to that? Yeah, he can't do anything wrong. He he can't, but that's, that's, that's neither here nor there. That's between them, I'm not. So, I'm not getting the, so the St. Louis, and then also the the favoritism. The favoritism. I get it. But it is what it is. I, I can't. I can't live in that prison anymore. I can't because it's it's. So you've actively taken control. It's. I'm. I'm trying to. And that's what you believe therapy is going to happen. Um, like yeah, and then like even talking to you, talking to Machado, you know, communicating with you. Because I felt that one of the reasons why I didn't communicate with you all as often was because she was doing that. And I didn't want you to feel overwhelmed. And she knew she, and sometimes she did it on purpose. Because I'd say that I wanna, I'm gonna call you guys and check, and the next thing I know, she's on the phone with you guys. But now I have learned that that is her, and I'm gonna do what I gotta do. Because I have, I have to, there are cracks in the foundation that I have to fix yeah. before it gets too late. Yeah. And I cannot blame anybody for that. Wow, I cannot sense. hold anybody accountable. Okay. That's what's up. So, and I have to because I'm your mother first and foremost. And I will protect you to the day I die. And I'm damn sure not going to let anything happen to you like what happened to me if I can do something about it. Yeah. Okay. I think this is a good... So. 
place to stop. Okay. Yeah, it's right. It's getting a little late. I know, and I got a headache. Okay. Yeah, you cried. Crying gives me headaches too. Okay. Oh, my lap was in that position too long. Yeah. Well, I'm getting like you. I can still kick your ass. Keep on. You can try it. We can talk about. We can talk about some if you want to. Sit down. What you say now? Nothing. All what right. you say now? Ma, come on now. You know Excuse I'm getting up there. I what, can't. What, what you say now? Ma, no, chill, bro. My knees. My knees. Oh, stay just like that. No. Oh, what my God. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I just peed a little. Please. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh.